Welcome one and all to the floor in my war room here where I'm going to be opening up a box of some vintage military stuff. So this package right here was sent to me by a follower named Chris, so thank you very much Chris for sending this stuff over. I'll probably be calling this a mystery box throughout the video, but like the last time I did a mystery box unboxing, I've seen some pictures of the stuff that's in here, so it's not a total mystery. Even though I saw some of this stuff though, it was just in a couple of those Instagram DM pictures where you can only open it once. So I like got a quick glance at it, it looked like some cool vintage military stuff, and now I'm gonna open it up and get a closer look at it. I'm going to do my best to pull things out one at a time and explain what they are uh, and try not to just get excited and tear everything out at once. So we'll see if I can show some restraint here. I always love when people send me stuff like this. Not only does it make a great video for my page, but usually when I get stuff like this, I can use it for my reenactments. I keep it in my collection and show it in my videos. So it really does help me out. No more playing around. You guys know what time it is. Let's tear this thing open. Um, usually I would cut it open with this original World War II Mark I Navy knife, but I think I'm actually going to switch things up. Uh, I got a German bayonet here, also an original. So, uh, how about we use that one and see how that does? You know, it'd be pretty hard to find a less practical knife to open a box with, but, uh, we're not all about practicality here, okay? I'm getting some style points with this thing. All right, apparently this bayonet is as dull as a freaking butter knife, so it's taking a little elbow grease. All right, I gave him my best shot. I'm gonna switch over to the uh, Navy knife before I cut myself terribly on that bayonet. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. That's some good American manufacturing right there. Look at that. Oh yeah, let's see what we got. All right, well I said I was gonna pull things out one at a time, but it's all kind of jumbled into one ball. Oh yeah, it's all coming out at once. So it looks like it's all kind of wrapped in this piece of canvas, which I do remember seeing this in the picture that he sent. Oh my God, look at all this. All right, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's start by looking at this big thing, which appears to be a canvas for a stretcher. It says, looks like Harbor Light, December 1960 litter. And a litter, if you don't know, is another word for a stretcher. So this is the canvas part that goes on a stretcher like this one that I'm showing you on screen right now. And this actually might be really useful for me. I have two stretchers in storage right now, and both of them had holes ripped through the canvas. And this canvas seems to be in really good shape. I know it's dated post-World War II, but for reenacting and stuff, I think I might be able to replace one of the canvases on my broken stretchers with this and actually get some use out of it. I'll have to see, there's a ton of different types of stretchers, so I'm not positive that this will fit on the stretchers that I have, but it's at least worth a try. All right, item number two out of the pile. Let's see. This is looking like just a bandana or a piece of cloth or something. I wonder if it's a triangular bandage. I'm not sure if they made green triangular bandages like this during World War II or not, or when this would be from. I have no idea. Gonna have to do some more research on that one. But let's see how it works as a triangular bandage. I'll see if I can make a sling out of it. Uh, and hopefully I remember the skills that I learned in the World War II First Aid for Soldiers Field Manual. All right, I think if you fold it in half here and then tie a big knot at this end, and then you tie a knot at the top here. And what do we have here? A perfect sling for a broken arm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'll get some use out of this for sure. Next up, random grab out of the pile. All right, I know what this is for sure. This is a World War II M1 Garand case, and it looks like an original. There's a lot of companies that make reproductions of these, 
Um, and I honestly have no idea how valuable an original one is, but I don't see them that often. I might just have to go get my M1 and put it in here to see how it fits. All right, I got it. Here's my M1. It's looking mighty beautiful today as always. Nice. All right, now that that's over with, let's see how it fits in this case. I wanna see if there's like a marking in here, like a date or something. Oh, there is. Oh, sweet. I'm having trouble reading the uh, maker on there. I'll have to take a closer look, but I can see that it's dated 1943. Same year production as my M1. Speaking of that, I think in my one video about my M1, I said it was made in 1942. There's a bunch of different places who have made charts to look up when your rifle was made. And I used one for that video that seemed reliable, but I looked at a bunch of other ones and it looked like the one I referenced in that video was off by like two months. So this was actually made early in 1943, not late in 1942, like I thought. Now that that's out of the way, let's put this case, which matches the date on my rifle, onto my rifle. Well, would you look at that? You can't ask for much better than that, guys. I mean, look at this. An original case in great shape that I can use to take my rifle to and from reenactments, and the date on it matches the year my rifle was made. I mean, come on. All right, next thing up is this wrist compass. I actually don't uh, know much about this here. It does not appear to be a World War II wrist compass or anything. I'm not even sure if it's a military one, to be honest. But it is a military one. I did not bother to look at the back of it in this video, but as you can see here, this is a US model 1949 wrist compass. And you can see at the bottom there, it's dated 1952. So again, not used during World War II, but this is a US military compass and it's pretty sweet. I was a little thrown off. It didn't look like a military one, but I think that was because it has the strap replaced. You can see one with the original strap here. The one I have looks like it was replaced with just the strap from a consumer wristwatch. But this thing is pretty sweet. I'll definitely find a way to put this to use. That's awesome. Next item, let's look at this canteen. Doesn't smell that bad. So this one, it looks like one of the side seam canteens that was used early in World War II and in World War I. If you look at the bottom, I don't know if you guys can see that at all, but it says Japan on the bottom. This is one of the canteens that was produced in Japan after World War II. If you didn't know, after World War II, Japan started producing copies, basically, of a bunch of U.S. military equipment like this. But it wasn't intended for military use. It was mostly sold on the civilian market for camping, hunting, hiking, stuff like that. As you can imagine, a lot of people after the war were keen to get their hands on the equipment they used in the service. So stuff like this was very popular. Next item. I guess I don't need to blindly grab anymore. There's only a couple things left. So this is a cartridge belt for the M1 Garand and it's in amazing condition. I mean, look at that. That looks completely unissued. Looks like there's a date on here. Oh, that print is so hard to make out. The print on these old items is often really hard to read and looking at it through your phone's camera can actually be a big help sometimes. So I tried to get some pictures of it in better lighting, but that actually made it worse. But if we go back to the video and just zoom in on a freeze frame of that, we can see that it looks like that bottom date is 1951. This looks like one that was made around the time of the Korean War. If I pull over some of my gear here that I was just using for a reenactment this weekend, you can see I have one of those on here that's fully loaded. But I'll show you the difference. The ones made late in World War II were still that darker color like this, but they had this extra little buckle in here that you could use to hold stripper clips for an M1903 Springfield. So you can see right now I have end blocks in there for the M1 Garand and those just take up a whole pouch. But if you add those smaller stripper clips, you can actually fit two of them stacked in here. And that's where this strap came in handy. You would actually put one clip behind it and then one clip in front of it and buckle this over the front clip. That way there was a strap separating the two loaded clips in here. And yes, they are called clips, not magazines. So when you open this up and pulled one clip out, 
the other one would be held in place and it wouldn't just come flying out with the other one. After World War II though, they simplified the design and took that little strap out. That's why we don't see it on this one. This one really is in great condition though. This is one of the nicer ones I've ever seen. And finally, there is this pouch, which I'm very familiar with. This is a Carlisle bandage pouch. It appears to be dated 1943. So here's another one. This is one I actually got sent in that last mystery box video I did. I don't know how easy it is to tell on camera, but this one is the earlier uh, olive drab number three color. Some people call it khaki, but it's really got like a green tint to it. And this is the olive drab number seven, which is the darker tinted color. You can even see on the back of this one, the hanger is in that darker color. That's really cool because I don't have an original one in this color. I have two in this darker shade, but none like this, so that's perfect. But what I'm really curious about is what's inside of this thing. And that thing's really sealed on there. Well, I'm having trouble getting that open, but in times like this, it's important to remember that in the back of the stock of the M1 Garand is where you keep your combination tool. Let's see if I can use that to pry this thing open a little. Boom. Yep, that's an original bandage. I'm not sure if this is the World War II version or a later one. I'll have to do some looking into this to see what type it is, but no matter what, it's pretty awesome. And there's one more thing that I have to look at. So this is a pin. Uh, it says Army Air Corps Air Gunner Wings. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about pins like this, but here's what the pin looks like. You can see it's got that propeller in the wings. I'm gonna have to do some more research to figure out when this is from. Thanks for sticking around while I open that stuff up. I have so much fun doing that, so I really hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I got some seriously good stuff in that box and I'll be able to put that to great use. Chris, thank you again for sending that stuff to me. That was really kind of you and I truly appreciate it. And if anyone else out there has military stuff laying around that they're looking for a good home for, just send me a DM on my Instagram. It's at World War Wisdom and we can get in touch about it. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.